Hi guys, my name is Melody. Thanks for stopping by and today is another My History Booktube. Because the month of June is Pride Month and I support the gay rights movement and the LGBTQ plus community, I had to think there for a second, I thought that I would do something in regards to what I have learned on that. Um, it's only a snippet of what I learned. I am not the master of all knowledge. I will just reiterate that. You might want to talk to other people from the gay community and history um, teachers who have more knowledge of myself, or more knowledge than myself, sorry. Um, however, I'm going to give you a background. So um, a few years ago, uh, me and my fellow university students decided to do a presentation on Stonewall. Now, the importance of Stonewall is very high in the gay community because Stonewall is what triggered the mass gay rights movement in America. Uh, and I believe uh, possibly across the world as well. Um, I do have uh, some uh, knowledge about gay rights in Edinburgh. Um, I may do a video on that. I'm not actually sure if I will. Um, however, what is also important about the gay rights movement is that key influential figures were um, people of color. I do not know if that's PC. I am sorry if it is not. If it is, uh, please correct me. Um, and black people were at the forefront of the gay rights movement. Now, I will briefly give you a explanation, well, a um, background and a history of this. Um, I'm going to read, hopefully not copyrighted, um, newspaper articles um, to you in regards of how this was reported um, by two different sources of media. And on the um, description below, there will be a bibliography um, there will be some good sources of documentaries to watch as well as um, a few books in regards to this. Um, these books are about uh, black culture um, and blacks in the gay community. Um, I would suggest that you read them and that you learn uh, your history um, because the gay rights movement was just not about white people. It was a lot about people of different races um, and ethnicities um, and uh, different um, um, people in general, to be honest, like men, women, trans, everyone um, was involved in this um, and they helped to get this movement going. But what I'll do is I'm going to go through that now and we'll read the articles and then we'll do a wrap up and then I will let you know what else I'm going to be putting at the bottom of this video. So if you're new here, thank you for watching. If you want to subscribe or anything, that's great. If you want to uh, click the thumbs up and share it, that's brilliant as well. Um, if you don't like this and you don't like me talking about these type of subjects, which are political in nature and are important, then you can go away. That is all I have to say. And also, um, Black Lives Matter and I believe in the movement and that will and I will discuss later. Thank you. So this will be uh, quite a long one. So um, the LGBTQ plus community um, basically had had enough of oppression and lack of rights, um, especially since the black civil rights movement had been so successful or appeared to be successful as we now know is sort of the case, but not really because of the systematic racism within America. However, it appeared to them on the surface level that it was successful. Um, however, there was an emphasis on blaming the LGBTQ plus community and criticizing their stance in the media. The police were responsible and seen to, to be by the LGBTQ plus community to be targeting them unfairly. It has also been stated in the latter, um, which is a magazine, as an organized response to the initial riots as leaflets were handed out to spark further protest. So that is the causes of the movement there. So a brief timeline of what, what's going on. In 1950, the Mat Mattachine Society was 
uh, formed by activist Harry Hay, which focused on social acceptance and support for homosexuals. In 1953, exec an executive order bans homosexuals from working in the government. This order was handed down by President Dwight D. Eisenhower because he said that gays were a security risk. In 1961, Illinois decriminalizes homosexuality and appeals their sodom sodomy laws. And in 1964, as we know, the Civil Rights Act occurred, uh, which I will say this in just way. Outlaws discrimination based on race, color, religion, sex, or national origin. Yeah, okay. So, supposedly, however, there was other reason. There is other ways to suppress um, poor people and black people and people of the LGBTQ commu plus community as well. Okay, anywho. 1969, Stonewall happens. It was in Greenwich Village in New York, and the police raided the inn in the early hours of June 28th, starting a riot by patrons. 19, but how, well, no, 1960s New York had gay clubs and gay bars, which was a place of refuge for the LGBTQ plus community, Americans, where they could openly express themselves and socialize without worry of stigma uh, or being attacked or being um, discriminated against. Um, the laws during this time was 1960s solicitation of homosexual relations were illegal. People could get arrested um, for wearing less than three gender appropriate articles of clothing. So if you looked like a male and you were a female, you would get arrested. Even if you didn't identify a female, but they would arrest you if you were being, or if you were trans basically, or a drag queen or anything like that. Until 1966, serving LGBTQ plus people, alcohol was illegal. So they couldn't drink in these cars and gay, pe a gay behavior in public was illegal. So think if you couldn't, like if you're now, if you couldn't kiss your significant other or hold hands in public, how awful would that be? But they couldn't because they had to hide themselves. Okay, so let's talk about the Stonewall Inn. So the Stonewall Inn was purchased in 1966 and was owned by the Genovese Mafia family. It was operated as a private bottle bar, which was basically bring your own beer. It was allowed to run for three years without being closed by the police, as they told Dick Leash um, in his article. We will, uh, it'll be in the the description below the the. Um, bibliography for them. It was, they told him that it had no license and violated fire and other regulations, but they had not closed it down and it was allowed to open three years without any interference or closing by police as such. The Genovese family um, paid off the New York six police precinct to ignore activities in the club and it was ran poorly and clean not up to code, but it was a place for disenfranchised drag queens, runaways, homeless gay youths. So people that didn't have a place to go, that was their place to go so they could meet other like-minded people and people just like them so they could have a community. Uh, it was ended up being the only gay bar left which allowed dancing as well. So usually the Stonewall would be tipped off by police uh, before the raids, um, but not on the nights of the raids. So they would tip them off before that there would be a raid coming up so that they can prepare themselves. Um, however, this night they didn't tell them about the raid. Um, it appeared to, it, this appeared to be a concentrated effort to close the gay bars in the village um, because uh, the Stonewall was pretty much the only place left by this point where they could go. Um, and if in New York, hundreds of young homosexuals of all races um, had no home, who had no home 
to go to between the ages of 16, 25. Um, they were thrown out of their school and of their homes for being gay. They flocked to New York to try to find themselves, to try to find a place where they could belong. And Stonewall became that place for them. Okay, so we do not know who threw the first brick. However, what we do know is that Stormé de, de la, la Vie, Lavery, Lavery, I'm sorry if I say her name right, a mixed race lesbian was forcibly and violently thrown in the back of a police van. And what she said uh, to those ejected on the street was, aren't you going to do something? And that's apparently when the protest erupted. Um, both Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera were both were credited as throwing the first brick. However, neither, neither of them actually claimed to do this. While Marsha P. Johnson saying in 1979 that she showed up later when the riots were in full force. Riviera, on the other hand, stated in 1989 that she was there drinking and the cops showed up by ejecting people or showed up ejecting people to the street and the patrons just started throwing pennies and coppers at the police. Um, a little bit about them. Marsha P. Johnson um, and Sylvia Rivera uh, later founded uh, the Street Transvi Transvestite Action Revolutionaries, or STAR, in 1972, which was a halfway house for gay and trans kids in New York. Um, Sylvia Rivera uh, was an activist. Um, however, Marsha P. Johnson, if you have seen the documentary uh, about her, the life of and death of Marsha P. Johnson, you'll know that unfortunately she was found, or, well, her body was found uh, floating in the Hudson River in 1992, possibly a victim of murder. However, police initially ruled it to be suicide, but that be, could be because of prejudice. Um, unfortunately, Sylvia uh, Riviera passed away in 20, 2002 due to complications of liver cancer. So those two are no longer with us. However, they remained at the forefront of the gay liberation movement um, and the movement for gay rights, um, which was started after Stonewall and they were on the forefront. Um, I will read over some of the documentaries in just a moment. So what I want to get to is there's two things I'm going to read to you, which are also very important. Um, I am going to read to you first what the New York Daily News posted on July 6, 1969 by Jerry Lisker in regards to the Stonewall riot. She sat there with her legs crossed, the lashes of her mascara-coated eyes beating like the wings of a hummingbird. She was angry. She was so upset. She hadn't bothered to shave. A day-old stubble was beginning to push through the pancake makeup. She was a he, a queen of Christopher Street. Last weekend, the queens had turned commandos and stood bra strap to bra strap against an invasion of the helmeted tactical police force. The elite police squad had shut down one of their private gay clubs, the Stonewall Inn at 57 Christopher Street in the heart of a three block homosexual community in Greenwich Village. Queen Power reared its bleached blonde head in revolt. New York City experienced the first homosexual riot. We may have lost the battle suites, but the war was far from over, lists an unofficial lady in waiting from the Court of the Queens. We've had all we can take from the Gestapo, the spokesman or spokeswoman continued. We are putting our foot down for one, once and for all. The foot wore a spiked heel. According to reports, the Stonewall Inn is two-story structure with a sandpaper brick and opaque glass facade was a mecca for the homosexual er element in the village who wanted nothing but a private little place where they could congregate, drink, dance, and do whatever little girls do when they get together. The thick glass shut out the world of the street 
inside the stone wall bathed in wild, bright, psychedelic lights while patrons ride to the sounds of a jukebox on a square dance floor surrounded by booths and tables. The bar did a good business and the waiters or waitresses were always kept busy as they snaked their way around dancing customers to booths and tables for nearly two years. Peace and tranquility reigned supreme for the Alice in Wonderland clientele. The Raid Last Friday. Last Friday, the privacy of the Stonewall was invaded by police from the First Division. It was a raid. They had a warrant. After two years, police said they had been informed that liquor was being served on the premises. Since the Stonewall was without a license, the place was being closed. It was the law. All hell broke loose when the police entered the stone wall. The girls instinctively reached for them, uh, each other. Sorry, Others stood frozen, locked in an embrace of fear. Only a handful of police were on hand for the initial landing in the homosexual beachhead. They ushered patrons out onto Christopher Street, just off Sheridan Square. A crowd had formed in front of the stone wall and their customers were greeted with cheers of encouragement from the gallery. Well, the whole proceeding took the aura of a homo homosexual academ academy awards night. The queens pranced out into the street, blowing kisses and waving to the crowd. A beauty of a specimen named Stella wailed uncontrollably about, while being led to the sidewalk in front of the stonewall by a cop. She later confessed that she didn't protest the manhandling of the officer. It was just that her hair was in curlers and she was afraid her new beau may be in the crowd and spot her. She didn't want her, him to see her this way. She wept. Queen power. The crowd began to get out of hand, eyewitnesses said. Then without warning, queen power exploded with all the fury of a gay atomic bomb. Queens, princesses, and ladies-in-waiting began hurling anything they could get their polished, manicured fingernails on. Bobby pins, compacts, curlers, lipstick tubes, and other femme fatale missiles were flying in the direction of the cops. The war was, war was on. The lilies of the valley had become carnivor carnivorous jungle plants. Urged the on by the cries of, come on girls, let's go get them. The defenders of Stonewall locked, launched an attack. The Cops called for assistance. To the rescue came the tactical patrol force. Flushed with the excitement of battle, a fellow called Gloria pranced around like Wonder Woman while several Florence Nightingales administered first aid to the fallen warriors. There were some assorted scratches and bruises, but nothing seriously was caused by the honey's turn mad woman of, of Shalot, I don't know what that is, or Chaliot. Official reports listed four injured policemen with 13 arrests. The War of the Roses lasted about two hours from about midnight to 2 a.m. There was a return bout on Wednesday night. Two veterans recently called, called the, recalled the battle and issued a warning to cops. If they close up the gay joints in the area, this is going to be all-out war. Bruce and Nan. Both said they were refugees from Indiana and had come to New York where they could live together happily ever after. They were in their thir early 20s. They preferred to be called by their married names, Bruce and Nan. I don't like your paper Nanless ma matter of fact, fact wait, it's anti, and I won't say that word, starts with the F, and pro cop. I bet you didn't see um, what they did to the Stonewall. Did the pigs tell you that they smashed everything in sight? Did you ask them why they stole money out of the cash register and smashed it with a sledgehammer? Did you ask them why they, it took them two years to discover that the Stonewall didn't have a liquor license? Bruce nodded in agreement and reached over for Nan's trembling hands. Come down, doll. Your face is getting all flushed. Nan wiped her face with a tissue. This would have to happen not right after the wedding. The reception was going to be held at the Stonewall too, Nan said, tossing her ashen-tinted hair over her shoulder. What wedding, the bystander, a bystander asked. Nan frowned with a how could anybody be so stupid look. Eric and Jack's wedding, of course. They're finally tying the knot. I thought they'd never get together. Meet Shirley. 
We'll have to find another place. That's all there is to it, Bruce said. But every time we start to start a place, the cops break it up sooner or later. They let us operate as long as the payoff's regular, Nan said bitterly. I believe they closed up the stone wall because there was some trouble with the payoff to the cops. I think that's the real reason. It's a shame. It was a, such a lovely place. We never bothered anyone. Why can't they, could they just leave us alone? Shirley Evans, a neighbor with two children, agrees that the Stonewall was not a rowdy place and that the persons who frequented the club were never troublesome. She lives at 45 Christopher Street. Up until the night of the police raid, there was never any trouble there, she said. The homosexuals minded their own business and never bothered a soul. There were never any fights or hollering or anything like that. They just wanted to be left alone. I don't know what they did inside, that, but that's their business. I was never in there myself. It was just awful when the police came. It was like a swarm of hornets attacking a bunch of butterflies. A reporter visited the now closed stone wall and it indeed looked like a cyclone had struck the premises. Police say there were over 200 people at the stone wall when they entered with a warrant. The crowd outside was estimated to be a 500 to 1,000, according to police. The stone wall had been under observation for some time. Being a cr private club, planes closemen were refused entrance inside when they periodically tried to check the place. They had the tightest security in the village, a first division officer said. We could never get near that place without a warrant. Police talk. The men of the first division were unable to find any humor in the situation beside the comical overtones of the raid. They were for throwing more than lace hankies, one inspector, inspector said. I was almost decapitated by a slab of thick glass. It was thrown like a discus and just missed my throat by inches. The rear can didn't miss, though. It hit me right above the temple. Police uh, also believe the club was operated by mafia-connected owners. The police did confiscate the Stonewall's cash register as proceeds from an illegal operation. The receipts were counted and are on file with, at division headquarters. The warrant was served and the establishment closed on the grounds that it was an illegal membership club with no license and no to serve liquor. The police have won are sure of one thing, they haven't heard the last from the girls of Christopher Street. Okay, before I get to discuss, to talking about that, and dissect, and well, we'll dissect it a bit, I'm just going to read the, I'm just going to read the uh, obituary of Jerry Lisker who wrote that. Um, I won't read the bottom bit because it just tells you about his family and I'd rather leave them out. Um, so Jerry Lisker, executive sports editor of the Fox TV new network, died yesterday at his home in North Babylon, L.I. Don't know where that is. Mr. Lisker, who was 54, had been suffering from brain cancer. He was the sports director of the New York Post from 1977 to November 1988, which he, when he took the post at Fox. Mr. Lisker joined the Post from the Star, where he was the sports editor and also served as the, as the sports editor of the New York Daily News National Edition. Okay, so that's important. He was the sports editor who wrote that. And just by the title of that, being in the New York Daily News, and being that is about... Um, LGBTQ plus people. It's entirely defamatory and entirely belittling to the patrons of the Stonewall. And basically, it stereotypes the whole p picture there. We don't actually even know if Jerry Lis uh, Lisker was ever actually there. Um, he could have made this whole up because there is no evidence of him being there. This is the only article he ever wrote that was not sports. And I don't know if any red flags, but also Fox, but anyway, besides the point. But the reason for reading that is that is what the public would have saw. That is the article they would have saw about the Stonewall, not really that, factual it's it there is some facts to pull out of there um such as the payments off to the police and things like that but the stereotyping um 
and the condescending manner in which it's written. It just shows you what the people of New York or white heterosexual males thought about this. And that is, com mm. even today, that makes me irritated so much, but that is what they were fighting against. So there's another article and this one is, I can't remember what this is in. Two seconds. The ladder. Okay, so let me see if I can get back to where I was on this. Equalize. Because this is like, is anybody else old enough to remember when you used to have fish machines and you used to scroll through them? It's exactly like that. So let me find it. So I'm just going to scroll and I do apologize. And by the way, I don't like cutting my videos. So you're just going to get all of this. Where did it go? Let's see if I can find it there. Excuse my children in the background. If you can hear them, they're probably arguing because that's what they do best. So stone. Okay. So I've just found that. Okay. Sorry, they are still arguing. I'll just pause it. Okay. I think they've calmed down, so back. Okay, so this is from The Ladder, which is an LGBTQ plus uh, um, magazine. I know that those other letters weren't out, and I'm sorry. I, I just tend to say that. Okay, so I'm just going to read what they wrote in this one about the riots. So... This article is just a brief mention in here is gay power in New York City. Gay power, social po and political power for homosexuals has become a reality in New York with the inadvertent help of the police department. At about 2 a.m. late Saturday night of June 29th, the police raided the Stonewall Inn, a gay bar at 53 Christopher Street in Greenwich Village. They had previously closed the sewer and the checkerboard, also gay bars within the territory of the 6th Precinct, but this was the first raid during peak hours when the bar was jammed. The raid touched off by approximately 400 homosexual men and women who yelled gay power and threw pennies, garbage, and even uprooted parking meters at the police. An unknown number of homosexuals were injured, four policemen were sent to hospital, one with a broken wrist. Several homosexuals who claimed that they were suddenly attacked from behind while passing through the area are suing the police department for assault and battery. Homosexuals gathered to riot on the streets of Greenwich Village on Sunday night, June the 29th, and of Wednesday, July the 2nd. Both the Mattachin Society of New York and the homophile youth movement began leafleting the village in order to organize protests, the conditions which sparked the riots. The newspaper did an excellent job of coverage, particularly the New York Times. WINS Radio, WINS Radio also gave rapid impartial coverage. The Village Voice, a so-called liberal weekly, which serves the Greenwich Village area primarily, but is sold all over Manhattan, did a series of articles on the riots, which were noted for a liberal, a liberal use of such terms as I will not say is the F word, as in F-A, yeah. And the other one, which is starts with a Z and it's for the women, it's very old, very, very um, small-minded. Anyway, etc., which received violent protests from a heavy gay readership. The Village Voice has long been known to the gay community for its policy of patronizing contempt towards homosexuals. Corruption in the bars. It, was, it is generally believed that the gay bars in New York are controlled by the mafia in cooperation with the police. Reputable leaders of the gay community stated as much in private during the days following the riots. And Greg Rodwell of the Home File Youth Movement went so far to as went so far as to make such charges in leaflets distributed on Greenwich Avenue. However, no solid evidence has yet been presented in court. 
It is also generally believed that in order to obtain a liquor license from the state liquor authority, a bribe ranging from 10000 to 30000 must be paid. Dick Leach of the Mattachine Society, that's who we were talking about earlier, of New York, states that when some friends of his attempt his attempted to get a license to run a gay bar, the SLA turned them down on technicalities, even though a recent decision of courts has held that gay um, bars and intrasexual dancing in public places are legal. Since the SLA refuses the issue to issue licenses to gay bars, these bars are generally run without licensing under unsanitary conditions, serving water drinks at outrageous prices. And there are and are therefore a perfectly legitimate target of police raids. During ordinary times, the police have allowed these bars to operate overlooking violations in return for a percentage of the tape. During election years, these bars become targets for raids and roundups of homosexuals. Raids in the 6th precinct are believed to have triggered off by the presence of a new captain who wishes to make his reputation as a law and order man during a conservative year by cleaning up the village. Okay, so where's the first article? Very, very stereotyped, very generalized. Um, shows a lot of uh, feeling for maybe the conservatives at the time. Uh, this article out of the letter, which was, like I said, LGBTQ plus uh, magazine, um, gives the facts, states what's going on, and is very neutral about it. They even actually put some of the coverage which they thought were being impartial and very neutral on the subject, which is actually really good. Now, um, at the end, um, what my feeling was here, and as always, if you read this, the new captain who wishes to make his reputation as a law and order man during a conservative year by cleaning up the village. Um, where have we heard that before? Law and order people. And that's where we get our problems um, today in regards to systematic uh, racism and as well as driving people to poverty and not taking care of them and while the police is so brutally violent because they are law and order um, and they're not meant to police that way. Um, okay, so those are the two articles. Um, I would just like to say that that is a snapshot in history um, and that is something that went on that a lot of people need to know about. I didn't get taught it in school, but I went to school in 90s, uh, conservative, uh, deep south. So we obviously wouldn't get told that. that. Um, I don't think anybody was uh, openly gay when I was in school. I didn't have openly gay friends until I was at uh, university when I was 18. So um, there you go. And that kind of thing as well as the oppression still occurs today. And like I said, if you think about the oppression that's going on there and you think about the Black Lives Movement matter, think about gay black people and how much harder they will have it as well. So let's think about our friends in the black community. Let's think about supporting them as well. And like I said, I was going to tell you about some things that I've got on the bottom of my uh, channel and that will be below. Um, first of all, there is going to be some documentary, a list of documentaries that you can go watch. I don't know if all of these are free or on Netflix or whatever, but Stonewall 2005 or and then there's Before Stonewall 1984, The Life and Death of Marsha P. Johnson, Paris is Burning, which is a brilliant documentary. And the TV, she, TV show Pose is based on that because it's about the underground drag movement in New York. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, there is a documentary on a YouTube about Sylvia Rivera. It's called Sylvia Rivera. She was more than a Stonewall documentary. Life documentary, Life documentary of Mother Sylvia Rivera. That's on YouTube and you can watch that. The, um, there is going to be a list of 
resources at the bottom as well as I have found three books um, in regards to race um, and LGBTQ plus community and sexual politics. So Black on Both Sides, A Racial History of Trans Identity by C. Riley Snorton. The Queer Limit of Black Memory, Black Lesbian Literature and Irresolution, Matt Richardson and Black Sexual Politics, African American Gender and The New Racism by Patricia Hill Collins. Um, those are only books to get you started. Um, if you want to look in deeper into that, I feel free to like research. Um, if you can find open research, it's good. I don't know how many of you have access um, to um, further education because if you do have access to places like JSTOR, um, all sorts, you can get so much good information. Now, below that, there is actually going to be articles. There is links to articles uh, with links to UK resources for Black Lives Matter. Um, there will be a link for Sheku Bayou, who died in 2015 after excessive force from five constable, constabulary, constabulary, I can't say, I'm sorry. Uh, well, five police in Kirkcaldy um, as he was, instead of peaceably um, arrested, he was violently arrested and murdered on the streets of Kirkcaldy. He died in the same hospital which his sister worked at and the family is yet to get justice and it's been five years. Um, you can go and donate to that and sign the petition, things like that. There is also going to be a couple of cards, um, ones with references, uh, to sources for, um, um, for Black Lives Matter. Another is petitions that you can go and sign and be more aware. And then I have some sources copied from Smokey Goes channel. Uh, which include an uh, anti-racism document, which has a lot of books on it that's already on my reading list and things like that. Um, and those are resources that are important as well on there. Um, I will also have a list of uh, Black booktubers that you can go and listen to and check their recommendations out. Um, so basically, from this, I hope you have learned something. I hope this is a starting point for your educational journey. It is also a starting point for mine. I am trying to become a better person and to learn more and to be more helpful and use my privilege for good. And even if only 30 people watch this, if you watch this and you get something out of it, that that's enough for me. Um, I hope you stay safe, uh, especially the protesters. Um, I hope everyone stays positive and keeps up the good fight and stand up and use your, if you're white, use your privilege for good. Stand with the protesters, let their voices be heard. If you need to get in between them and a police officer, do it. Um, say something if you see something and don't let people get away with it. It's just not right. This shouldn't be happening in 2020. It's been 400 years. You would think that they would be able to see that the color of our skin is only due to like a DNA um, change in the way and where that we were right, where that we were lived. It's only genetics. It's nothing to do with the your personality your smartness your brilliance and and for too long people have been suppressing others and it just needs to stop and if you say all lives matter you can jog on because yeah all lives matter but they don't matter until black lives matter and what about as well jog on with that because i hate what about isms and i will not respond to any comments like that if you have something positive and something constructive and something to add to the conversation that lifts up people, then that's fine. But other comments, jog on kitty. Anyway, again, stay safe. I love you. You are more beautiful than you will ever know. And I support everyone who is 
out on that line protesting and I wish I could be there with you and I'll do my best. I will try to learn more and be a better person and to keep fighting the good fight. Um, I am sorry I'm crying because this is such an important biz business to myself as well. Um, but um, I love you guys. I will see you next time. And remember, uh, June the 19th is Juneteenth, which is the day of emancipation of the slaves. And if you can read any sort of book in regards to that, um, please do. If you want me to do something on that, that I can do that. If not, then um, I will probably do some more about um, women culture in Edinburgh or something like that. Or maybe some more medieval history. But yeah it's it's tough out there and just keep fighting because that's all we can do we can only be on the right side of history because apparently nobody can learn from the past or no one in offices and the higher offices can and the only people who can change it are us so stand with everyone this is a positive movement is positive for change keep it going it's not over just because they were arrested for george floyd it's not over justice needs to be had for everyone thank you very much bye